Good morning, church. And good morning to our friends from Minnesota Adult Teen Challenge. Um, Amen. We love to have you guys here today, and we are excited um, about the the worship. Um, And to those of you who are joining us online, uh, we want to say welcome to you and uh, buckle up. Uh, This is a fun service, and we hope you'll all enjoy it. I do want to let you all know that following the service, we are going to have a meal Uh, We will proceed from the sanctuary through the parlor, where we'll have two serving lines, um, and then we'll have a chance to fellowship together. And we're going to invite all our friends. Um, You guys get to go through first. Uh, Just try and leave enough for the rest of us. If you could, that'd be nice. Uh, But there'll be plenty of egg bake for all of us to enjoy. Um, And so we are blessed uh, to have you here today. Um, There will be also, I want to let you know at the end of the service, There will be an extra offering uh, that we as a congregation can offer to Minnesota Adult Teen Challenge. We will hear more about this at the end of the service, but we have baskets as you leave, and you can uh, place any of your gifts um, through there, and that is a vital ministry um, to what they do here. Uh, So we encourage you to prayerfully consider how God is leading you to give. As far as the other aspects of church life, we're moving along in Lent. Uh, Things are going great with our Wednesday night programming. Uh, This week is our uh, facilities and grounds and men's fellowship. We're going to be doing the baked potato bar. So you're all encouraged to come to that. And then we have our Lenten Vespers service following. Um, We do have a somewhat of a pressing need for more candy. I didn't think I would be saying that uh, here at Westminster Presbyterian Church, the the home of candy. Um, But we need more candy for our Easter event, which is only a few weeks away. So if you're led, uh, talk to Laura, talk to Pastor Britt um, about how you can do that. Uh, But uh, again, we get four or five hundred people here on the Saturday before Easter. Uh, We get to share the message of the resurrection Uh, with all who are here, and we get to have a great time. So I encourage you to support that. And I think, uh, Britt, we good? We're good. All right. Well, we're going to open our service. Ascending Truth is going to lead us. uh, They're going to give us an intro, and then we will sing a song together, and we will hear them one other time. So um, let us now continue to worship our Lord and Savior in spirit and in truth. Thank you. 
Now please stand as we sing our opening hymn, This is Amazing Grace, in your uh, supplemental hymnals. Um, Gentlemen, we don't have enough for you, unfortunately, but I think you might know this one. So uh, there you go. So let's sing together with one voice uh, to our one God. And you may be seated. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from Luke chapter 22, verses 39 through 46, and can be found on page 87 of your New Testament Pew Bibles if you'd like to follow along. And what we do see here is really beautiful, and we just sing it, and that's why I kept this out, because we see here God's amazing grace for us. We see this unfailing love and how he took our place, and how he bore our cross. And it is just a lovely vision of our God, a God who loves us, a God who prays for us, and a God who cares for us so deeply. And so we are on page 87 of the New Testament, 
Luke chapter 22, verses 39 through 46. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. When he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. And we do thank God for his word this morning. And so just as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ modeled prayer for us, a deep, passionate, meaningful prayer, uh, we too do the same. As we come together in the body of Christ, <clears throat> sharing our joys and concerns, and praying for the brothers and sisters in our midst. I do have a couple of um, ones that were shared uh, with me this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Jim Huskin's brother, Fred, uh, passed away, and we've been praying for Fred for a while now, but uh, we need to uh, lift up prayers for that family. And we know that uh, Fred has entered his eternal glory, and so we praise God for that. Um, also, personally, I want to thank you for the prayers. As you know, last week I was in California with my father uh, following his heart attack and heart surgery. Uh, he was doing well, but uh, last night got the message that uh, he's back in the hospital, um, and uh, his heart, he's got congestive heart failure, uh, so things aren't um, looking real good, but just... Um, God is great, and uh, He will continue to um, be there for him and for my family, so I'd appreciate your prayers. And his name is Don, um, or as his younger son calls him, Donaldo. Um, you can refer to that as well. Um, are there any other joys and concerns? And I also, from our, our friends with us today, any things we can be praying for any of you as well? Yes, Karen. For Roland and Carol. Anything else? All right, well, let's, uh, let's go to our God in prayer this morning. And following the prayer, uh, we will say together the Lord's Prayer, which will be on the screen um, behind me this morning. Let us go to our God. Our Heavenly Father, we enter into your presence and into your grace. Lord, you are the God that took a knee for us in the Garden of Gethsemane. You prayed for redemption, renewal, salvation. You knew the burden that you would soon bear. But God, you chose freely to go to the cross. And you did so because of the unending and unconditional love that you have for your children. And we call ourselves your children, Lord. And so this morning, God, I pray that you will bless us continue to share that supportive and loving spirit with each one of us as we seek to um, stay awake, if you will, in the garden. Rather than falling asleep in our own grief, Lord, let us live in the hope that comes only from you. And so we pray for your blessing in our lives now. And Lord, we do ask for a special measure of grace for all of those of us who might be struggling with issues. Um, and now, God, we ask that you will hear us 
in a time of silent prayer as we lift these concerns to you, Lord. Hear our prayers. And we thank you, Lord, for listening to our concerns, and we know that you are God that is always present and always with us. And today, Lord, we lift up uh, the Huskin family as Jim's brother Fred passed away. Uh, we uh, thank you, Lord, for his salvation, and we pray, God, that you will continue to, to bless this family. Um, I also ask for prayers for Roland and Carol, who have been hospitalized. We pray for your uh, healing power in their lives, as well as in the life of my father, Don. We ask that you will be with him and uh, restore him. And God, we just pray for strength uh, for his wife, Dolores, and the rest of the family as well. And God, we continue to pray for the family of Doris Schneider and for all the, uh, the family that she has here at Westminster, as we know that she is now in your glory as well. <clears throat> and so we pray for your sustaining love <coughs> in our lives uh, as well. Uh, God, we lift up uh, Millie Massey's daughter, Mary Ann, who's recovering from surgery. Uh, we pray for Jake Hegel's uh, friends, Christian, who had a leg and foot pain that went away, and we, we praise you, God, for that. And Lord, we lift up our friends from Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge. Uh, we are so blessed by their presence here today, Lord. But minister to them. Uh, be there for each one of them uh, today and the days to come. Because as with all of us, Lord, we know uh, that the, the road is long and the journey is hard. But it is you that will guide us and lead us through it. And so we pray for your presence in their lives. And we celebrate with you the, uh, in the worship that you are creating here today. And Lord, we also want to lift up these names that our staff has prayed for this week. So we pray for the Barron family, pray for Gordy and Terry Briggs, Sid Brown, the Davidson family, the Levi family, Bert Magnuson and Paula Decker, uh, the Olmstead family, the Oman family. We lift up Bob Rice, Pat and Steve Rodewald, and Scott and Terry Worminger. Lord, be a blessing upon all of them so that they may know of your love and experience your truth. And now, God, we ask that you will hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite the ushers forward to receive this morning's offering. And as you do, know that this is your gift to this congregation. Again, later in the service, you'll have an opportunity to give towards uh, Minnesota Adult Teen Challenge. So now let's ask a blessing. Lord God, we pray that you will bless all of the gifts that are given here today. May you use them to restore your children and to bring your will and your, your peace uh, to your earthly and to your heavenly kingdom. We pray this in your name. Amen.
please stand for our doxology. Before you take a seat, I'll invite uh, our friends up, and as they get settled, it's a tradition of our church to, to pass the peace, so peace to all of you, and turn to your neighbors and give them the peace of Christ this morning. Okay, so I'll have the, the rest of you take a seat. Uh, children, if you'd like to go back to your time with our Sunshine Singers, you can. Uh, we also want to give the opportunity, with your parents' consent, uh, if you want to stay and enjoy uh, the worship and the experience here, we encourage that as well. Welcome, our friends. Good morning, church. Um, my name is Jose Kohler, and I am the Office and Development Assistant at Teen Challenge in Rochester. And on behalf of the organization, our choir group here, we want to thank you for having us. Um, as these guys are settling in here, um, you know, it's going to be hard for them to follow up the choir group that was just singing. I'm sorry, but that, that was pretty good. So... Um, how many of you are familiar with who we are? I didn't see any hands up, did you? Maybe, all right. Um, you're going to make my life a little easier, but for those who don't know who we are, we are a nonprofit organization who deals with those suffering from addiction, whether it's alcohol, drugs, or even in some capacity, some mental health. And um, one of the things that, am I right? Oh, there we go. Um, ooh. <laughs> Ask and I shall receive. Um, one of the things that I can say is, you know, we've seen an uptick in addictions. And it hasn't really subsided after COVID kind of came and went. But we do know COVID kind of triggered things to really up push on the usage. And what we're seeing is that usage is continuing far beyond what we were anticipating once COVID was over. Um, cool thing is, though, our doors have been open 24-7. So there's always somewhere to go. And, you know, by the grace of God, we got that opportunity to help. Um, we do have locations throughout Minnesota, outside of just our Rochester location. We have the Twin Cities, of course, which is kind of the hub of Teen Challenge. We also have Duluth, Brainerd. Um, we have our Lakeside Academy in Buffalo. And then, of course, our Rochester location. And then we got our newer location that is Breaking Ground in Alexandria. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, there have been a little whispers about one other location, but not sure I'm able to enlighten you just yet as to where that could be. But if you do some thinking about it, you might catch on. I don't know, maybe. Um, ooh, there we go. Apparently if I stand in a certain area. Um, one of the things that I, I would like to say is, you know, the cool thing about being at Teen Challenge, I've been there for about four years now, but to see 
the change that these guys are going through, and even with our women in the women's facility as well, to see the change that is being taking place from the start to where they're at right now, and some, how many of you are graduating this next month? Or actually this month? We got one. And I know we have at least one or two in the women's side. Now last month, we had eight guys? Eight guys and one, and one lady. And to us, that's payday, man. That's where it all happens. That's what they're all shooting for, is they want to graduate this program, they want to get alongside God, and they want to go and serve for him. And that's what these guys are doing right now. They're serving the Lord. And I'm going to, you know, it isn't about me up here talking. It's about these guys and what Jesus is doing in their life. So I'm going to send it over to them with our first song, Goodness of God. Good morning, church. fails me all my days I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head oh I will sing of the goodness of God all my life you have been faithful all my life you have been so so good every breath that I darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God So, so good Is every breath that I Every breath that I am 
goodness of God was showing right there. Good job, guys. Um, as I get ready to have George come over and do testimony, um, one of the things that, you know, he is always running after us. Even when we're straying away from that path he's giving us, he's running after us to bring us back and put us back on course. And that's, that's priceless. You, that shows how much unconditional love he has for each and every one of us. Um, George, you ready? No. No? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, as you heard, my name is George. Um, before I got into the Teen Challenge, I went into 37 years of addiction. Um, it all started, you know, like 13 years old. Um, by 15, I was fully into drugs and alcohol. Um, 17, it caught up to me for a little bit. I was arrested for like nine months. I swore to myself when I got out of jail that um, I would never go back or face any prison time. Um, so then, like 26 years later, um, I ended up getting arrested. Um, looking at prison time um, on May 12th of the last year. So I swore to myself that I would never also ever forgive anything that happened in my past from uh, my dysfunctional family. Um, I was taught to be a functional addict by people in my family that died being addicts. Um, but facing four years prison time back in May, um, I decided I'm gonna for forgive the people that did wrong to me, that I thought did wrong to me, um, and surrender everything over to God. Two weeks after being in jail, somebody came up to me and handed me a Teen Challenge brochure and said that the charges that I had, I should look into this. And that was, that was a sign from God that that's where I needed to go because that was the first place that ever went. It was the first time I've ever been in treatment. Um, I've heard other treatments don't work as well as the faith-based. Um, and I think this has like, been the best thing that's happened to me. Ten months ago, would, would I have said that I was going to be up in front of people telling my testimony of what God's done in my life? I'd say, no, there's no way. Um, now I'm grateful that you guys have support us. Um, thank you very much. And I think most of you would say that you probably would have figured you wouldn't be here right now. And that just shows that's God's plan. He has control. He knows the purpose that he has for you, and he knows where you're supposed to be. And right now, all you guys are supposed to be here. All the ladies are supposed to be in the program that they're in, and it's because of him. He called on them, and whether they liked it or not, kicking and screaming maybe, he plucked them and said, you're coming with me anyways. And here they are, and I would say obedience is probably a big key. So, um, John, come on down, buddy. You got it, my friend. Hope and faith is what I'm going to start out with. Jose's really hoping right now, since he gave me the microphone and put me in front of you nice people, a 10th grade dropout with a horrible drug addiction, and uh, been to prison multiple times. It's really hoping I don't screw this up. <laughs> we have faith in you. Yeah. And these guys have faith in me. Um, where do I start? Not much different than these guys. Uh, I grew up without my dad. He died when I was about four months old. Um, I don't know. My mom met another guy, abusive alcoholic, so my childhood wasn't all that great. Uh, like I said, I dropped out in 10th grade, thought that uh, drugs were going to be the answer for me. They weren't. <laughs> uh, I've, had a, I've done really good at trying to kill myself many times um, with all the drugs that I've done and just a really reckless life and I've had many turning points like God kept picking me up and dusting me off and sending me on my way and I think the final time was like last May I was in a motorcycle accident cruising along wasn't wearing my helmet because well who wears a motorcycle helmet? Um, when I crashed, you see in the movies where they, uh, the time kind of stops and 
things go real slow and all that. Well, that's real. I had enough time to where I was like, well, I had a good life. This is it. Love you, Mom. Love you, sis. Uh, I'll be waiting for you. Um, after I had rolled over a couple times, like tuck and roll is also a real thing, uh, I sat up and I was like, oh my God, I'm still alive. And I don't know, a few months later, I was still feeling kind of invincible, so back to drugs and back to abusing myself and not living the best life. I was laying on a dirty floor wondering why I was still alive. And I was kind of voluntold to check into a treatment. You know, the probation is looking at me like, you fool, like, what are you doing? Um, right now I'm still facing 10 years in prison. Um, but my faith is, is kind of growing here in Teen Challenge. Uh, I know that God is going to put me where I'm supposed to be. Um, I get a lot of love from the brothers here, the ones standing behind me and the ones back at the unit yet. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know where I'd be if I went to came to Teen Challenge. Like, even in short term, I was, I was still fighting the idea of sobering up and getting my life together. And just one day it was, it just clicked like I found what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to help others. And Teen Challenge has really shown me how to do that. So, oh, well, that's all I got. Thank you, John. Is this your first testimony? It was. All right, awesome. Good job. Um, some of the things that happen when I go to these choir outings is sometimes the Lord will put different things on my heart while listening to the testimony. Now, you did open it up with hope, but that is, that is the key. We're all hoping for God to give us that direction that he answers us. The thing is, we also have to be patient. And that can be the struggle, is having that patience to listen to what he's asking us to do, guiding us. I mean, it's just like a parent with a child. You have to have patience with that child. The Lord is asking the same from him, is he's been patient with you, waiting for you to come and seek him. You find him. And you ask for so you know you're asking for help, but now you got to be patient for him to respond, and that can seem like a a struggle in itself. But trust me, if you wait it out, he's going to come through for you big time. And these guys right here, living proof of that. Um, I'm going to step in real quick, and before we get to our next song, um, I just want to give you an idea of what the programs are like. So. Our short-term program is anywhere from 30 to 90 days, and that's where they come in for the first time and basically are base getting sobered up, getting their feet back up on the ground, kind of get themselves in order. Um, then it's encouraged, and the reason we say encouraged is because some of them don't choose to go to long-term. Um, oh, and one other difference too, short-term program, we get state funding. Long-term program, we don't get that anymore. Because as soon as faith comes into play, the state stops helping. Um, so our long-term program, this is where we encourage these clients because we want them to understand our life is God's way. And the only way to do that is to get to know him and get him to take over our lives. And that's what they do in long-term. They get to experience who God is, how powerful he is, and how much he can save you. And that goes for, what, another 12, 13 months, give or take? Okay. Um, from there, then they can go on to graduation, and then they can go into TCLI. How many of you guys planning to go to TCLI? 
All right. How many are you familiar with what it is? Yeah, more so than I am. Would you like to care to share what it is real quick? Um, it's another year or two to get your uh, pastoral license. Uh, if you want to go that route, they are accredited by colleges. If you wanted to do 50-50, I'd, like 10 years ago, I ended up going, and it was a little bit different program than it is now. It's uh, more upgraded. Um, yeah, it's just, it really, it, it gives you a, enough rope to hang yourself, but yet it gives you enough freedom to press into God. They do street uh, street ministry uh, and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that's all I really got. <laughs> So, in other words, you get to kind of better foundation for leadership in ministry. All right. Got it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it happens. Um, we also have our residential outpatient program. This is where if somebody who needs some help and guidance but doesn't necessarily need in-house treatment, they can still get that. And we have one down in Rochester now, and I know there's some up in the cities as well. Um, but the Rochester one is, I'm getting close to a year old now, but th it's awesome that we give that opportunity for those who need it. Um, one other group that we have is a group that talks about, it's prevention, know the truth. And this group goes out to schools and basically educates the kids a little bit on what can happen when the influence of the world takes over and the influence of drugs and alcohol and what that road can look like? Um, so it's kind of a way to give them a wake-up call to realize it's not really a good path to go down. And we're going to hope that you listen to the message we're giving so that you can avoid it. Um, so with that, let's all have uh, Han come up and do Redeemed.
Good job, Han. You guys rock that one. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, there's times when I go, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, and then you guys just knock it out of the park. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Hey, Corey, why don't you come on down? Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Here you go. Thank you, Jose. Thank yep. you for the kind words. Um, I'd like to start off by saying God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Um, my name is Corey. Um, I was born into a, a, a broken, destructive home. Uh, my parents were very young when they had me. Um, didn't really know how to take care of themselves, so how would they take care of a uh, infant, right? So it was difficult. I remember um, my first memory is really of my grandmother when I was like five, I moved in. And that's when I really got like the care or like love from another, from a, a person, right? Like true love. And she um, planted that seed of, of Jesus Christ into my life when I was very young. Um, I was a very, I was a rebel as a kid. I was like, I did not listen <laughs> very much, uh, we'll just say that. Uh, I like to learn from experience. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I didn't listen a lot. Um, I got into trouble a lot as a kid. Um, but one thing that I'm, I'm for sure of is that my grandmother prayed for me a lot. And I'm, I'm receiving those prayers right now. And thank, I thank my grandmother like every day. I think of her all the time. So. I just want to thank my grandmother. Thank you, Grandma. Um, so when she ended up passing away from cancer when I was like 10, and when, when that happened, uh, that left my dad to really um, step up and be a single father of, of three kids, and it was not easy for him. That's when he really got into alcoholism and um, kind of drowning away his feelings and didn't know how to process my grandmother's death and stuff like that. So I... I got a lot of um, unintended um, hurt and like pain from my dad, right? And I forgive him now for all of those things because I know in that time he was he was hurt, he was broken himself. So um, at the same time, I'm I'm grateful for for that because that instilled in me what I do not want for my kids. Um, but uh, after my grandmother passed, I ended up um, smoking marijuana for the first time when I was like 14. Um, before this, I was like, I'm never going to, I used to tell myself, I'm never going to date a girl that smokes cigarettes or a girl that swears and all this kind of stuff, all of these um, <laughs> lies that I told myself. And I ended up being exactly what I did not want to be. Um, but in that, I ended up coming to a point of complete despair in my addiction to where I just didn't know where to turn, didn't know who to talk to, and then, boom, all of a sudden, Teen Challenge comes around. I come to Teen Challenge, and I begin to feel that love that my grandmother gave me. And I believe that love is Christ through other people. Through his followers, you receive that true love. And since coming here, I completely submitted myself to Christ officially, 100%, no turning back. Um, and in doing that, I have found peace. I have found a relief, a, a relief of anxiety. Um, I have a minor anxiety right now, but <laughs> it doesn't com ever completely go away. But it is far from where it used to be. Um, I have the opportunity to pour into my brothers. I have the opportunity to, to give the love that Christ has given me. Um, I plan to, to still do that, to become a counselor and, and help um, people like me out, help them be delivered, help them find Christ. I want to thank all of you guys for your prayers, for your donations, and God bless you. So broken, peace, 
and the ripple effect. So those are several things that came up when I'm sitting there. And one of the things is all these guys can say they've been broken in some form or another. And I don't know about you, but I know I've been broken, and I'm sure some of you out there probably have as well. Um, but we're, all we're looking for is that peace. And the one who can give us that peace, God, he wants us to be at peace. It might not be in the form that we're always looking for, but guess what? He's still going to get you peace. Um, and then the ripple effect. The addiction doesn't just affect the person who's using. It affects family. It affects the friends. It affects the community. And it just continues and continues and continues. But the cool thing is, is and I'm sure you guys are working with this, is those relationships that were broken and those bridges that were burned are being rebuilt. And it's because of Jesus coming into their lives and fixing what was broken. Now they get to reestablish those, those bonds that they once had and make their lives even better. Um, and we got Trey coming up. Come on down, buddy. Now, here's the cool thing. Now, some of you guys have been in my levels class. And so it's cool to see these guys standing up here and giving testimony and seeing where they're progressing. But Trey, I had him in my class too, but it wasn't until earlier this week that he came after my class and was like, I want to do a testimony. And I was like, sweet. He just answered my prayer because I was trying to figure out who am I going to have speak. So Trey, it's all yours. All right. Thank you, Jose. Uh, well, they call me Trey, but my name is Tremaine. Uh, I was born in Austin. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in a little bit different broken home. Uh, you know, it's usually the dads that are absent, but for me it was my mother that was absent. And uh, she's an alcoholic and still is. Um, but yeah, I started drinking when I was the age of 10. And uh, started using marijuana at the right right around the same time, and it really took off when I was about 14, 15 years old. I uh, it just consumed me, and it was all I it was what I loved actually. Um, it's sad to say, but that's what I loved. And um, yeah, so <laughs> uh, I ended up leaving my dad's house at an early age against his liking and that just created more chaos and destruction for me in life. Uh, I've been in and out of jail, I can't count how many times, at least 35, 40 times. I've been to prison, I have a problem with drinking and driving. Um, and yeah, a uh, little story, so I got grandparents too, and if it wasn't for my grandparents, I know I wouldn't be standing here today, because they're the ones who helped raise me, really, and they're still, you know, through them, I'm able to see the love of Jesus, and, you know, it's not usual that you're able to feel that stuff, but my grandmother and my grandfather and my other grandmother they showed complete love and uh, support. They're, they're my, big, my biggest fans. So I'm thankful for them. Uh, and also, you know, so I was in, I, I was in jail for a little while uh, back in Mar uh, May 6th of 2021. And I was there for a while, and I wanted to get into Teen Challenge. I actually was trying to get into Teen Challenge before I went to jail, but it didn't work that way when you're on the run. <laughs> so uh, they don't like to have warrants at Teen Challenge. So, uh, <laughs> so I was in jail for a while, and I tried to get into Teen Challenge. And Teen Challenge accepted me uh, October of 2021. And... Uh, they still denied me. 
the courts, and, and actually Maurer County Courts, they denied me to go to uh, Teen Challenge. They wanted to send me to prison, and uh, so, long story short, I ended up encountering a guy in jail that I've never met before, who ended up having, having gone through this addiction himself, and actually had my grandmother Grace as his counselor at Fountain Centers in 1991. And so we connected, and we played a lot of Scrabble, and we really connected. And he saw something in me I didn't see in myself. And, you know, uh, he took a chance on me. He bailed me out of jail. And uh, he, he, he's, he's the one reason why I'm in Teen Challenge. Um, I was going to go to Valley View, but my... Uh, parole officer wasn't too happy about Valley View, and she said, just hang tight, give me two more days, and I'll get you a teen challenge. And so I said, all right, that's what I wanted to do in the first place, so okay, that's cool. And I get the teen challenge, and I did their short-term program, and I didn't rush it. I did 98 days in short term. I didn't want to rush it because I've always rushed it in the past, and I've always missed something, and what I've missed is the love of Jesus having him fill the void that I've always needed him to fill, but not allowing him to do it. And um, I was three weeks into my program, and my grandmother, Grace, passed away. And normally, I probably wouldn't have handled that too well. Um, I kind of deal with grief and death. I haven't always dealt with it the right way. But there was something different for me, and I was in my room, and... Like, I hadn't known she died yet, but I just had this, like, overwhelming, electrifying run through my body, you know? And, like, an hour later, they came and told me to call my cousin, and she had passed away. But the whole thing, I'm, the reason why I'm saying that is because it's like she knew I was going to be there, right? And she knew I was going to be safe. And she, they've been trying to get me to Teen Challenge for over 20 years, and... Uh, she's like, I talked to the last time on the phone, she's like, I know you've surrendered, Tremaine. I can tell it in your voice, I can just tell it, just tell how you're speaking. And she's right, I have surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. I have, uh, I mean, I, I want to love everybody like he loves us. And uh, get outside of myself and do, do things for others and be of service to other people. Uh, you know, my goals. I'll be graduating in October, uh, but my goal is I'm gonna, I want to get into the ministry stuff, and I want to get into the chemical dependency, recovery, working with guys coming out in and out of prison, and I'm going to do it. So uh, that's, that's all I've got. I appreciate my family coming today, and I appreciate you guys allowing us to come and share with, with you. You guys are awesome, and I just want to give all glory and praise to God and we appreciate you guys. God bless you. Good job, Trey. Thanks. Um, and one, of, one of the things is I was going to mention is timing. And, you know, you said you tried to get into Teen Challenge multiple times, and it failed. Um, but we also got to keep in mind that Nothing is a coincidence. There's reasons behind it all. And God said it wasn't your time. It wasn't your time. He heard you. He knows you want to get in there, but he's waiting for the time to be right. Now your time is here. And he's answering your call. And the cool thing is, is what I can see in Trey already is he's answering God's call. And he's doing it the right way. And, dude, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, Courtney, you ready to do some singing? Yeah. All right. We got Courtney here, and he's going to... Uh, I'm not singing with you, man. You don't want to hear that. <laughs> you don't want to hear that. Um, he's going to be singing Who You Say I Am. Thank you. There you go, brother. Who am I that the highest 
Jesus King would welcome me. I was lost, but He brought me in. Good job, Courtney. How many of us here are children of God? Yeah. Amen. Um, all right. So before we close out with our last song, I just want to add, you know, I hope you guys have been blessed by us being here, um, encouraged. And one thing I always say is if we've connected with just one person out there, we've done God's work because that was what he was after. He was looking for us to give the message to a particular person. So if we've helped one or many, we've done his job. Um, one thing I wanna encourage you guys to come and check out is our table, which is just outside here. Um, we have informational pieces there about the organization. Um, one of the other cool things we have is these client-made wooden crosses. And yes, guys, I'm going to say it again. These are free, but for a small donation. So just keep that in mind. Um, along with that, we also have something that I am a little bit more passionate about, and that is our mentors and volunteer program. And guys, how many of you have mentors right now? Yeah. And that just shows the need that the guys program has. So men out there, if you feel a nudge to want to help in some capacity, may you look at maybe possibly mentoring one of these clients. Um, there's nothing more special to these guys than to build a relationship with somebody who's already following Christ and build upon that with them. Um, 
Does anyone, other guys that do have one, do you guys want to share something that you guys do with your mentors? Okay. All right, so, um, where to start? All right, so I, I guess I kind of bit off more than I could chew. My first mentor pass was last week, but it really, really isn't that extreme. You know, it's kind of just you're hanging out with, I almost said a normal person, but you're hanging out with someone who's <laughs> just someone who's out there in society every day compared to like, you know, we're in Teen Challenge for 13 months every single day. So, but it's just, it's an opportunity to get out, do things like we just did something simple. We went to Culver's, we sat there for like two hours, we ate and we talked. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just, it's a really good opportunity for you to grow deeper in your faith and get closer to someone who's also on the same journey that you're on, just minus the addiction. Or you never know, they might have some form of addiction, but we can help them just as much as they can help us, you know? It's awesome, you just you get to talk, you get to learn more about someone, you get to connect more with someone, you get to really hear like the message of the truth through someone else. It's like you're, you're being taught by someone else how to be a true man or or woman of God, you know? It's it's super cool. You don't really have, there's not much to it. I, I I really encourage you guys to really just sign up for it. We need mentors. Thank you. And it really isn't that scary. I mean, it's the process of getting to be a mentor can be probably the biggest hurdle because there's background checks and things like that. But once it's once you're paired up with a client, it's not that difficult at all. And the expectations, I mean, I suppose saying mentor makes it sound like you have this high level of expectation, but in all reality, they're just looking for somebody to be a partner with and just enjoy their company. Um, and you know, just like you said, you know, just going out there and just enjoying two hours of talking and eating or drinking coffee, whatever it might be. That's all they're looking for. And it gets them out of the building too, which I'm sure you guys definitely enjoy. <laughs> um, and then yes, of course, there's always that financial need because without it, the program wouldn't run. And that's, that's key is, you know, we come to churches every Sunday as much as we can. We have our annual gala. They're basically fundraisers and that's why we are always looking for communities and churches to help support us so that we can keep this program moving and continue to serve God the way he would like it to be done. Um, I think with that, we're going to end with Death Was Arrested, and then we'll turn it over to you guys. Thank you. That's my room. <clears throat> okay, let me get serious. Well, I forgot the words. But... Alone in my sorrow, in death, in death, in my sin. Lost without a with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in. When death was arrested, in my life began. Ash was weeping, only beauty remained. My orphan heart was given a name. My morning grew quiet, my feet was to dance. When death was arrested and my life began
chains, I'm no prisoner no more. Claiming no ransom, he's faithful. He canceled his debt and he called me his friend. When death was a thankful for Minnesota Teen Challenge coming out to talk with us, share their testimonies and their music. And so just from our church, guys, thank you so much. That was wonderful. Uh, we are inviting everyone now to uh, egg bake breakfast. Um, you all are going to go through first, but let me just say a prayer for our meal and a benediction. So God, we thank you so much for your love and for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you for saving us and for all that you've done, for constantly running after us. And so God, we just give all this over to you. And God, for the meal that we're about to receive, we ask that you bless it to our bodies and bless us to your service. Thank you for everyone who uh, baked all this food. And God, just let it be a blessing. And as we go out, let us go out in the power, peace, and protection of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.